Hello, hi, I'm Punita here from Huawei Global Training Center and we're going to discuss about eNodeB Site Solutions, Part 14. So over here in this topic, we have a several category on the cell classifications based on different site deployment scenario. Okay, so let's go to the first type, common cell. So common cell refers to the cell established in a common sector. So this is a common sector served by a single RF processing module such as RRU, one RRU. Let's move on to multi-carrier cell. Multi-carrier cell or scenarios, the cell working on different band. So basically the cell will work on different band over here. They are set up in a single sector. So this is considered one sector, which expands the capacity without deploying a new eNodeB. And this multi-carrier networking applies to densely populated urban areas where traffic increase. Example, exhibition centers, waiting hall, shopping malls, CBDs, central business district and residential areas. So before establishing the multi-carrier cell, you have to ensure the RRUs, RFUs and CPRI port by then you need, they have the capabilities of the multi-carrier cell. So let's go to the third example, combination scenario. So in this combined RFU and RRU sector cell, they are working on the same frequency. They join, they provide a sector. So this is also one sector. However, to achieve a greater RF capacity, if the RRU have processing capability, if the RRU or RFU's processing capabilities does not match the antenna transmission, the TX and RX reception capability. Let's say your processing capability cannot match with the antenna. That's where you need to combine. So basically, only the RRUs that works in 1T, 1R or 2T, 2R mode can be combined. All right. So let's go to the fourth example, multi-sector cell. Multi-sector cell will be combined by multiple sectors. So you can see here we have sector 1 and sector 2. Each of them have a separate RF channel. So they also have different RRUs. So they have also have their own antenna transmit power. So this multi-sector cell requires a single frequency network which is known as SFN. And PICO remote radio. So they requires to use PRRU as well for aggregation cells. So they can use PRRU like a lamp site solution. And the last example is about split RRU and RFU sectors. So basically in this split scenarios, multiple sectors can be established using just one type of RRU with multiple TX and RX. Because when the processing capability does not match with the antenna transmission, they will be using this kind of scenario. So you have to take note of the processing capability of the RRU, RFU, whether it matching with the antenna's transmission capability. So the most important thing in this scenario is the processing capability. So let's go through the scenario one. Scenario one is actually outdoor coverage using BTS 3900 series or BTS 5900 series using FTD network. So the external power input of this BTS 3900 series is either using AC, okay, they can use AC or they can also use DC power. So this is configured with RFUs, okay, they also have um, RRUs. So basically there is a DCDU power configured, the circuit breaker, to supply the power to the BBUs and RRU. So the cabinets are also stacked, so this is known as a stacked cabinet. The maximum configuration, basically you can have two BBUs with DCDUs and also like around nine RRUs, which is giving you less than 800 watts totally, the power consumption. All right. When I compare with six RRUs, okay, it can give up to the power consumption of 1200 watts. So it depends on how many circuit breakers you're using. If you're using the conversion type of uh, power module like EPU, it can give the power exemption between 
800 watts to 1200 watts. So the power consumption totally different if I use non, 9 RRUs in comparison with 9 RRUs plus 12 RFUs, you can get less than 800 watts. So if I use 12 RFUs plus 6 RRUs, it is between 800 to 1200 watts. So the power consumption totally differ. So this is an example of the overall picture together with other connections like grounding cable, ground bar, DC power cable, jumpers, feeders and etc. Let's go to the scenario 2. Scenario 2 is outdoor coverage for hole elimination using a blade side BBU3910A. This solution is to eliminate outdoor coverage holes. It uses minus 48 volt DC applicable for outdoor scenarios where they don't have enough space and they are using a blade side solution. So usually BBUs and RRUs will be installed separately in a pole or in different wall. The DCDU will be installed in a third party cabinet to provide the DC power to BBU and RRU. So maximum 6, 6 20 megahertz bandwidth can be used and 40 for our cells can be supported. So this is the example of the diagram GPS 1 to 6 RRUs which has 20, band, 20 megahertz bandwidth. External alarm system are there, transmission equipment and power supply. So this is the power distribution from the direct current distribution unit to the BBU and the RRUs. So scenario 3 is for indoor coverage solution using DBS 3900 series and DBS 5900 series. FDD applicable for both FDD and TDD mode. So this is the diagram, the first one and the second one. So they have RRU, BBU, DCDU. They have all the connection here together with the AC RRU as well. So if the RRU is more than 150 meter away from the BBU, AC power supply is used. The CPRI connection will use the ODF or known as optical distribution frame. So usually it's recommended the distance between BBU and RRU and the ODF must be within 5 meter. So that means we have the AC, RRU and ODF. So this one should be within 5 meters. If RRU is less than 150 meter away from the BBU, you can use AC or DC power. And direct CPRI connection is also used. So this is basically another example of the second part. So RRU and IMB03 are both installed on the wall. And if the wall mounted is impossible, use the L-shaped support. So this is an example for indoor solution. And for this case, you can use SFN, single frame network, if you're using in the same frequency to serve one cell. So usually for this solution, you can have a combined RRU and RFU or PRRU. So you can use PRRU in a group or you can use a common RRU and RFU depending on their processing capability. So currently the SFN can be served by maximum 6 RRUs. So this kind of solution will help to actually expand the coverage of the cell center area and reduce the interference at the cell edge. And usually this solution of SFN can be used for the, usually is popular for both outdoor and indoor solution. So let's go through the scenario for easy macro sites. So easy macro sites, basically you can see that it is used <coughs> for indoor and outdoor solution. So from the diagram, we have the this newly deployed optical fiber and the cables at the poles. So this is actually a street lamp controller and the main AC list in the remote independent metering. So it's actually installed in the lamp post. So we are using devices like AAU system, pole mounted deployment. BBU is in the remote indoor deployment or local outdoor cabinet. This is an example. ODM, power supply and auxiliary equipment configure in a different scenario. It depends. So this is an easy macro. It's quite flexible and easy to deploy because we can easy to transport that AAU system and we can install anywhere we like for the solution. So scenario 5 is about deep coverage using the book RRU. So basically, this kind of solution, we will try to improve the weak coverage areas. So macro base stations cannot provide deep coverage for residential areas, which suppresses user requirement. You see, this is the macro base station, but we have certain areas are quite weak. So a large number of weak coverages exist. 
So user experience will deteriorate. Requirements, traffic will be impacted. So it's very difficult to deploy in residential areas. So they have high requirement. So for this solution, how we can improve, we use Book RRU. So this is the solution. So this is the solution. We can use the macro micro coordination that provides deep coverage for residential areas. So this book RRU is more suitable in a residential area. So this is perfect for residential area because the size is small, large capacity, and easy camouflage. So it allows the BBU to share the macro micro base station. The coordinations are perfect. They you reuse back the existing resources from the macro and achieve zero week coverage. So it supports also the cascading deployment and reduce the transmission resources. So that's all for this part. We have discussed about the typical ERAN deployment scenarios based on indoor and outdoor coverage. So quiz time. Macro base stations cannot provide deep coverage for residential areas, which suppresses the user requirement. Is this statement true or false? So the answer is true. That's all from me. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Bye.